I'm from Afghanistan. My family relocated to France in 2003, shortly after the American invasion. I was only 12 years old when it all started. Between 2001 and 2003, armed terrorists would intrude into our home and use it as a headquarters to plot attacks against the invading army. My father suffered from a genetic disease that would eventually take the use of his arms and legs. This is why I think the Taliban chose to hold up in our home. There would be no resistance. The first time they burst through our doors, it was horrifying for me and my two younger sisters. But eventually we got used to waking up and seeing armed men in our living room. About a year after the war broke out, following the attacks on the World Trade Center in New York, the Taliban would begin to raid small villages like mine, looking for recruits to replace the fighters that were killed in combat. Of course, since they knew where I lived, and that my father was in no position to do anything about it, I was one of the first to be taken from my village. Myself and several other boys were blindfolded and loaded onto a truck, then driven to a remote location outside of town. My village was located west of the Hindu Kush Mountains. That's about the only location that I could give for this place. After about an hour of just sitting in the truck, we were finally ordered out and the blindfolds were removed. By this time it was dark out. The armed men made us line up single file in front of this enormous cave entrance. I remember seeing crates of weapons and ammo at the mouth of this cave, but beyond that, there was nothing but darkness. There were five armed men total. They all had their faces covered and just stood there with their weapons ready. If I had to guess, they were waiting for their leader to come out and give us the initiation speech. Looking around, I was definitely the oldest of the seven boys that were there. Because of my past experiences with the Taliban, I knew that these men were not the good guys. They may have prayed to the same god as me, but they were ruthless and brutal to their countrymen. I was at the very end of the line. Directly behind me was the cave entrance. So I made a split second decision and made a break for it. I ran full speed into the dark cave, hearing angry shouting from behind me. I ran past the supply crates and further into the cave. The passage narrowed as I moved forward. I heard the truck reposition the headlights were now aimed directly at the cave's entrance. I eventually entered an open cavern area. I could hear the men behind me, so using what little light I had, I hid behind a rock formation that was beside the opening and waited for my pursuers. Two of the armed men eventually entered the cavern. I heard one of them saying that if they found me, they would just put a bullet in my head for causing trouble. I peeked my head out from behind my hiding spot to see an AK-47 pointed directly at my face. One of the men had found me. He shouted at me to stand up, and as soon as I did, we both heard a loud scream coming from the other side of the cavern. I only caught a quick glimpse of what was happening. The other man was on the ground, thrashing violently. He was completely covered, head to toe, by enormous spiders. Without exaggeration, these spiders had to be the size of house cats, and there were hundreds of them crawling all over him. The man who discovered me quickly turned around and gasped at the horrifying sight. I took this opportunity to flee. There was no way I was going further into that cavern so I used the headlights that were still pointed at the cave's entrance to make my way back out. As I ran, I heard the sounds of gunfire, shortly followed by more screaming. As I neared the cave's opening, the headlights quickly vanished, leaving me in complete darkness. This was the absolute worst time to be in the dark. I made my frantic exit from the cave, just in time to see the taillights of the truck as it sped off. The other boys and the remaining Taliban fighters were gone. They may have thought that what was happening in the cave was an attack by the Americans, and decided to cut and run. I was now scared out of my wits, and I had no idea where I was, and even worse, 
I was now terrified that these humongous spiders would emerge from the cave and devour me. There was one path through a rock formation that the truck had driven through, and that was the only way I could take. I remember thinking that these spiders could jump on top of me at any moment, so I ran as fast as I could. As soon as I cleared the rocks, I could see the lights of my village in the distance. It took me about two hours to reach the town, but I thankfully made it back in one piece. In the time that I was gone, American troops had taken over my village. I was stopped by soldiers and was taken to an interpreter for questioning. I was more than happy to tell them where the Taliban was hiding, and after a while, they eventually dropped me off at my house. My mother was overjoyed to see that I was still alive. When I think back to this experience, I can still say with 100% certainty, what scared me the most was not the armed men who broke into my home and took me from my family. It was what dwelled in that cave. <laughs>